according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of the disciples of Jesus remark, This sort of talk is hard to endure. How can anyone take it seriously? Jesus was fully aware that his disciples were murmuring in protest at what he had said. Does it shake your faith? He asked them. What then? If you were to see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before, it is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words I spoke to you are spirit and life, yet among you there are some who do not believe. Jesus knew from the start, of course, the ones who refused to believe and the one who would hand him over. He went on to say, This is why I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. From this time on, many of the disciples broke away and would not remain in his company any longer. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you want to leave me too? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe. We are convinced that you are God's Holy One. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all be seen. Today is the 21st Sunday of the year. And the Gospel for today is a continuation of the testing that Christ was giving his followers. It was a test about the bread of life and about the blood of Christ. Christ told his disciples, Unless you eat my flesh, and drink my blood, you will not go to heaven. You will not. And it says that the disciples of Christ could not understand what Christ was saying and find it very hard to accept, to eat the flesh of Christ and drink his blood was really difficult to accept. Even we would not dare eat human flesh and drink human blood. And so when Christ says, you will not go to heaven unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, the disciples found it very hard saying, and so the gospel says many of them stop following Christ. Now, what was wrong with what Christ said? Did Christ really tell them to eat his flesh and drink his blood? No. Every time Christ would speak, 
he always would refer to something spiritual, not physical. Christ was not telling them to eat his physical body and eat it physically. Christ did not tell them to drink his own blood physically. Every message of Christ is spiritual. Like the second reading about the husband and the wife. Did you notice what Christ said? For the husband and the wife to go to heaven, Christ says, the wife must always be subject to the husband. Not subject physically. She must be subject to the husband spiritually, meaning to say, in her mind and in her free will, mind and heart. Meaning to say, the wife should think exactly the way her husband thinks and should love what her husband loves. That is the subjection Christ was talking about. And then Christ says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Do you husbands know how Christ loved the church? If not, how can you love your wife as Christ loves the church? The way Christ loves the church is purely spiritual. And therefore the love the husband must have for the wife must be spiritual just as the subjection that the wife should have for the husband should be spiritual and when we say spiritual it means the mind and the free will the mind and the heart and so when Christ told his disciples you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. They couldn't take it. How come? Because they thought it was physical. Just as you husband, upon hearing the second reading, that you should love your wives, you think it's physical or just romantic. And wives, when Christ says, subject yourself, you think it's just physical subjection. The New Testament is always spiritual, never physical. And so when Christ says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, it's spiritual, it's not physical. So when you come for Holy Communion, it should not be the body that receives the body and blood of Christ. Because Christ says, you see, the flesh is useless. When you receive Holy Communion, you receive the host through your tongue, through your mouth, you swallow it, it enters into your stomach. That is all physical. That does not do anything good to the soul. Nothing. It does not even do any good for the body. When you receive Holy Communion, you are receiving God who is spiritual and therefore it is your spirit your soul 
that must receive God. Not your stomach. That's useless. It benefits you nothing at all by receiving Christ in your stomach. How do you receive Christ with your soul, with your mind, and with your heart, your free will? And how is this done? Well, when you come to the communion rail to receive Jesus Christ, use your mind, your intellect, believing that Christ is man and God. And you must describe in your mind what it means that Christ is man and what it means that Christ is God. That's why the Catholic Church, we never touch the host except the priest whose hands are consecrated by a bishop in the Old Testament, if you touch God or the Ark of the Covenant, which contains the Ten Commandments, you would die. Anybody who just approaches God, like in the sanctuary of the Old Testament, would fall dead. Even the priests, when they went to the temple of Jerusalem, they could not enter the Holy of Holies where God was unless they were pure in spirit. It is not only forbidden to touch God, it was even forbidden to approach Him. And anybody who dared would die. And now, we touch Christ, we hold Christ in our hands. Now, that is a sign that we have no faith. And therefore, when we receive Holy Communion, we only receive Christ in our body. We do not receive Him in our soul. So to receive Christ in our soul, your mind must be focused on Christ, believing that He is man and He is God. And you must be convinced of that. And then your heart, your free will. At least during Holy Communion, you must love God alone. Everybody else must be secondary, must be tertiary. Your husband, your wife, and children must always be secondary because Christ says, you have to love God above all things with your whole mind, whole heart, and whole soul. If we cannot do it the whole day, at least do it when you are receiving Holy Communion. You see, when you receive Holy Communion only in your body, you come to the communion rail, distracted, thinking of other things, and you receive Holy Communion, it's only your body who receives Christ. And in a few minutes, Christ is gone. It's the soul. He's digested. He's gone. But when you receive Christ with your soul, with your mind and with your heart as long as you don't commit a mortal sin Christ would be present in your soul as man and God 
and you just cannot imagine what that can do to your soul and to you. Then God, the most powerful being in the world, is permanently in your soul is just unimaginable. You cannot imagine the wonders that can work in your soul and in your lives. And so in the Gospel for today, Christ is reminding us that for us to go to heaven, we must eat his flesh and drink his blood. Yes, when you come to Holy Communion, you will receive him physically in the form of a piece of bread. That's okay. You will really receive him physically and will lose him after a few minutes. What is important is when you come to the communion rail, you receive Christ not in your body, but in your soul. And the two faculties of the soul is the intellect and the free will. When you receive communion, your mind must only think of God as God and man, and your heart, at least for a moment, should only love God above all things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen.